This old-time radio program was originally aired live, long before the advent of high fidelity. As a result, you may detect an occasional surface noise or volume drop due to transmission problems so common to old radio. We hope, however, that any variance in audio quality will not take away from your pleasure in listening to this, one of the all-time favorite shows. Today's guest is the wonderful actor and director Tony Cavallaro. You've seen him as the lead in Nickelodeon's School of Rock series in the role made famous by Jack Black. Recently, he portrayed metal icon Ozzy Osbourne in the Motley Crue biopic The Dirt. You can currently see Tony portraying fan favorite ex-Satanist Keith in HBO's The Righteous Gemstones, where he stars alongside Walton Goggins and Danny McBride, or by listening to the new comedy wellness podcast Slop. Coming up after the break, Sensory Deprivation with Tony Cavallaro. This is what happened one day when the ice cream van stopped by Tufty's house. Ice cream! And Tufty goes to find his mummy. Tufty always asks his mummy to go with him to the ice cream van. But Willie Weasel has gone off to get an ice cream by himself. Dear. Oh, Mummy! Willie has been knocked down by a car. Now Willie has been hurt. And all because he didn't ask his mummy to go with him to the ice cream van. When you want to go to the ice cream van, always take Mummy with you. Let's dive in, brother. All right, man, cool. All right, well, Tony, thank you so much for being on the show. I really, really appreciate it. Uh, I, I want to kind of give the audience a, a little bit of an idea first of, of what they've seen you in recently because you're extremely recognizable in your last two roles, being uh, having played Ozzy Osbourne and then being in The Righteous Gemstones as Keith. So, you know, tell me a little bit about this whirlwind ride lately where you've had these big back-to-back -back successes that the audience love, uh, and, you know, all of a sudden people are dressing as you for Halloween. So how is how crazy is that? Man, you know, it it kind of is a uh, – it gives a nice – paints a nice uh, picture of what the industry is like. So I did this amazing show on Nickelodeon School of Rock. I, mm -hmm. It was the Nickelodeon version of the film with Jack Black, and I played his part on the TV show, and, and I was actually doing – shooting a movie called Dog Days and uh, got the call that we had been canceled, which kind of was out of the blue because we, we thought we, you know, we had done one last season, which had more episodes than any other season and thought we would keep going. And, uh, and that was kind of it. So it was kind of like, all right, back to square one. And that was, and that I, was two seasons, right? Three. We did three seasons, three seasons. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And I was hopeful, you know, I got to direct on the on the third season, was hopeful to get to direct some more for the fourth season. And, um, man, uh, you know, it was all of a sudden, all right, back to pilot season. And, and I felt really lucky because I had, you know, got this, this little, um, this part of Ozzy Osbourne in the dirt, which, you know, I thought was going to propel me into pilot season and, you know, did the dirt, the announcement happened, and then pilot season was a total bust. Mm. And, you know, the dirt, it was wonderful and amazing experience. But honestly, man, that, that was one day of work for me. Right. I showed up. I did one day of work, got my paycheck for one day of work and uh, kind of was like, oh, my God, now I have this crazy blonde mullet <laughs> to play Ozzy. And I, I've worked one day this year and I don't know what the heck is going to happen next. Right. And um, I got this. My wife was writing with a friend of hers, and 
her friend's an actress and showed up in her like Sunday church clothes. And my wife was like, you know, what, what, what's the, why are you dressed up like this? And she said, oh, I just auditioned for Danny McBride's new show. Ah. And Annie said, you know, oh, can I read the script? So Annie got the script to Gemstones. And, and I was like, Tony, you have got to go in and audition for this. So we pushed and pushed and pushed. And, and um, Annie kept, my, my wife kept on me to keep asking. And meanwhile, we were pitching a show. So I was kind of focused on that and kind of like, well, hopefully I'll get in for this audition. And, you know, it's not easy coming from a kid's show to even get those opportunities. You right, know, and, right. And um, lo and behold, I got, I got the audition for uh, for this Satanist role on on the Gemstones, <laughs> and so again, my wife, like like she did with the uh, with um, Ozzy, you know, helped me out. We kind of decided on this big character choice that I'd never really done before. I'd done a similar one at the Groundlings and a similar one on this web series ages ago, mm-hmm. and uh, it was total synchronicity, man. So it went from, you know, working one day, you know, in the first part of the year to getting to do this magical show with my comedy heroes, you know, in the second half of the year. And I'll tell you, I saw you first. The first time that I really uh, was aware of you is when you did play Ozzy in the Dirt. And that's one of those characters that it's almost like Snoop Dogg in uh, Straight Outta Compton where it is, you know, I think they had to do a voiceover on that because it's such a hard voice and and the mannerisms and the look are so hard but you know i'm watching the dirt for the first time i had read the book years ago and i I knew that scene uh you know vividly already as as it was being set up and i'm like holy shit this guy is just he's embodied ozzy like the everything and i mean it was literally uh, like you walked on screen and you stole the rest of the movie. You were the standout of, in terms of rock star portrayals, you really did steal that movie. And the same goes Aww. for, for uh, Keith and Gemstones. You, you have this, it's strange, and I mean, I, not to blow smoke up your ass or anything, but honestly, you have this, this weird thing where you walk on scene and you immediately steal the show. You know, even with, uh, with Gemstones, you hardly had any dialogue. In the dirt, hardly any dialogue but you captivate with just expressions, body language, and, and just really your presence. So it's, that's, that's really it, sweet, man. I, again, I think it's just, you know, it's a combination of things, man. I just get so lucky, you know, to, to have this Groundlings background to kind of create these characters. But those were just literally two characters where I took big swings and they just happened to, you know – pay off and people really enjoy them and you know i you know just really lucky man and humbled to get to to get to do something you know special for sure well you know i when i when i think about uh i don't know for some reason two characters always come to mind like when i've seen uh when i saw you in the dirt and then in the gemstones role i thought that you would be incredible as like ultimate warrior in a biopic think i mean it opens at wrestlemania six you're facing Uh. hulk hogan Bam, <laughs> come on, done, right? That or or as the Penguin in like a Batman Ooh. movie, right? So because, uh, you know, you've got this Robert Pattinson one coming up, and I think it's what Zoe Kravitz is going to be uh, Catwoman. Uh, and we've had, you know, Joaquin do this incredible Joker performance. But uh, you could really, with your facial expressions and your body movement, <sighs> Penguin, easily. And you do oh, that fantastic. Would be amazing. But that's just, you know, those are my two cents. But I want you to talk about the Groundlings a little more because, you know, I, I live right down the street from it. It's such an iconic, famous school here in L.A. You know, we've got uh, Paul Rubens, Pee Wee Herman. I mean, great character actors are, are just honed there. So what was that experience like? You, you, you know, you get here. Why the Groundlings? You know, you, like, what was the plan? I don't know. We could cut me off at any point, but you, you know, got it. You got I it. I mean, this is a deep dive. So I graduated from the Virginia Military Institute, and um, I had planned to take a commission in the military. And about mm-hmm. my junior year, I vacationed to L.A. and fell in love with it. And you know, my parents had always been the funniest people in the room. I had always done like in-school plays, but could never really do it anything outside of school. And obviously, there was no real theater major or program at VMI. So, you know, I, I said, screw it. You know, when else am I going to have the chance to do this? So, you know, I graduated from VMI, saved up that summer after graduating and moved out that fall 
And originally I had been looking for like a master's degree in um, possibly like theater history or something because I was a history major at VMI. And, okay, um, okay. So I came out to L.A. and uh, I took – uh, theater arts and dance as a second bachelor's degree at California State University, L.A., Cal State, wow. L.A. Wow, okay. And I did that um, for two semesters, and then I took that summer, I was doing summer classes, and I was doing background work. And I met a friend doing background work, which is a whole other story we could talk about, but <laughs> uh, they told me, you know, you should go take classes at the Groundlings, and I didn't have any idea what that was. And so I signed up for an audition to take classes there, and I went in. And I, from that first audition, which is like a mini class, I was like, oh, this is the place for me. This is exactly what I want to do, whatever that is. And I didn't really know what it was at that point, you know. You just but knew this, that you were kind of on this path. Yes, this this was the place for me. I felt from that very first audition, I, I can make big choices. I am fearless you know, doing this stuff, and, and I, I'm excited to do it. And, you know, at that time, I was living in a studio apartment still in uh, active alcoholic and addict, and, and uh, I was working as a janitor four days a week and um, and saved up my money uh, and, and just said, okay, I, you know, I, I love structure like we talked about before. You know, I, mm-hmm. I went, you know, Taekwondo, Boy Scouts, military college, you know, college and and high school sports. And I was like, I like, you know, uh, if I work hard, it equals reward, you know. And I saw at the Groundlings, you know, those 30 people in the main company, a lot of them I saw on TV working and doing parts here and there. And I said, if I can just get up on that wall, maybe I can can do this thing. So that kind of became my sole focus. And, you know, little did I know I was going to, you know, get my entire career from there and 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 my whole life pretty much met my wife there in in the oh, wow. Sunday company performing together yeah I, I met her you know it was kind of a weird situation we ended up in Sunday company together and we had never worked together which is you know I'd been taking classes at the school there for almost 4 years and we'd never ran into each other and and I remember seeing her do her first sketch there she she's this very sweet beautiful, you know, fair skinned girl and, you know, as polite as can be. And and I remember the first sketch I saw her do, she was playing a lunch, a lunch shift stripper trying to (laughs) pick up a beer bottle with her cooter. And I was like, Oh my God, I'm in love with this girl. (laughs) And, uh, and the rest is history. Well, how long were you in? How long is the groundlings? Because, you know, you got to figure there's, there's probably going to be listeners that are wanting to be, uh, you know, getting into acting that, maybe are, are terrified to take that first step or, or afraid of the rejection or afraid of the failure that uh, potential that could come with that kind of an endeavor. So what is that process like? Because I know they, they offer like sponsorships once in a while to, you know, to certain individuals and yeah, they do so make, they have, you know, uh, yeah, they have internship programs. They have diversity initiatives. Um, obviously the classes are very expensive. My whole thing was, you know, <sighs> Just for anyone new, this is kind of what I say. There are like mm-hmm. five real paths to working in, in show business. And maybe, I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm wrong. People, this is just my kind of viewpoint. So okay. you can have a, a family member uh, that is famous or that is able to, um, is able to help you and, and, and make it happen for you. Um, that's kind of number one. You can get okay. a handout from a super powerful uh, industry family member, and then the the next one is you could be um, you could be someone that makes it big on Instagram or YouTube or Snapchat or um, or Facebook. Any of those, you know, we see it all the time now. Yeah, and you that's know, a new, relatively new thing. I mean, for us, exactly. You know, and I did that for a while. I did YouTube pretty steadily for about three years before I got into the junior company at the Groundlings and oh, wow. was pursuing that pretty heavily, you know, two videos a week, producing, directing, writing, you know, all that stuff. And, and it's then, just like skit, just skit shows? Yep. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Characters and stuff like that. So that's kind of the second path, I, I, I think, and, and very accessible path. If you can, you know, just put yourself on camera. We all have these portable 
production studios in their pockets now. Um, right. There's no reason you couldn't start a blog or. And and then my other thing with that is, you know, if you are going to do something like that, try and get as focused as you can. You know, if you're passionate about playing cards, do a vlog about playing cards. If you're passionate about dramatic work, great, start recreating your favorite scenes from movies. If you're passionate about comedy, get a group of talented people and start doing sketches. You know, you look at the Lonely Island guys. You look at... Um, sure, Pee Wee's Playhouse. Uh, good, yeah, the Good Neighbor guys. You know, yeah. All on SNL. It's, you know, these guys, they, they focused in, they found a talented group of people and they created. You know, more than anything, that's the thing you need to create. You know, so that leads into my next mode. You can either do stand-up, which is, you know, nonstop. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. doing the clubs, working on your stuff, open mics. You know, I have a lot of friends that went that route, you know, and they get TV show deals and they do this and that, you know. And, and so, you know, you could go the stand-up comedy route. The next route is you could do sketch or improv comedy. If you're in Chicago, that's either – um Oh uh, uh, yeah, what Second is City there. Second City, right, right. And uh, in New York, you could do, you know, UCB in New York. I also think there's... Might there's be here, they're here in L.A., yeah. Yeah, and a... then here in L.A., you could either do Groundlings or, or Improv Olympic. You know, and again, same kind of thing. Work your way up through the system, get into regular performances, and then get recognized that way. And then the final mode of of doing that is getting into a a fantastic acting school that has, you know, is performance based. And there's a lot in New York, the neighborhood playhouse, playhouse West out here. Um, I know there's also IAMA out here, which is another theater group. And, you know, again, these, you know, stand up improv and the dramatic route, all of those, you're trying to get exposure to those agents and those casting directors and those producers that would come see those shows there. Exactly. And, then, you know, the other routes, like I said, are, you know, social media or YouTube or your final way is hopefully having a family member that can throw you a bone and put oh, you in yeah. a movie yeah, or buy the one of your case, scripts. Or, best yeah, case exactly. scenario, you know. Yeah. Well, you had mentioned SNL, and, I mean, you're going to remember, we grew up with, like, the second coming of SNL when it was Adam Sandler, David Spade, Chris Farley, Chris Rock, you know what I mean, Dennis Miller. And these legendary comedians, and you know Chris Farley is uh, really important to you, right? In terms of someone. Yeah, that he's my hero, man. I was I was a fat kid growing up, so he was like, oh my god, a god. You know what I mean? And I I still remember to this day when he passed away, going out into the backyard yeah. and crying, you know, because Tommy Boy is my favorite comedic film of all time, and that guy was just something super special, and uh, especially yeah. uh, a little fat kid in Virginia growing up, he was he was my idol, still is. Man, I grew up in Chicago, so he, you know, he oh, passed, yeah. I mean, I was in Chicago, it was, and it was something, it was, you know, the interesting thing about Chris Farley is, I, I read that there was, you know, when he was in a room, he had to have the whole room laughing. That was the sole, you know, thing in his mind, was how do I make this whole room laugh? And even if he was sitting next to like a, a little kid that wasn't enjoying it, he would take his mind off of whatever was in front of him. And his goal was to make this kid happy and to make this kid laugh. That was it. And that brought him joy. I mean, he had his demons, yep. but you know what I mean? But that was his passion. And, you know, you don't see that very much with someone that, that has that much uh, love for the craft of, uh, you know, being comedic and, and those kind of body movements and the facial expressions and the, the almost manic uh, attitude about him, you know? And there hasn't yeah. been anyone like him since. I, you know, he was something special, man, and you really, really saw it with Tommy Boy, mm -hmm. you know, that there was, there was a deep, a deep, uh, there was some depth to that guy, you know? And those acting moments where he got to really act in that movie – uh, were so sweet and special and touching. And I feel like that's what really separated it for me. You know, those moments where he's with his dad or even out on the boat on the end or having the connection with the, with the, with the romantic interest he had in there, you know, it felt real, you know. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. It was raw and it was just authentic. And you really just believed that, that, that he, there was some part of him in there that was that character in every role he played. You know, there was just, there was something that, that he experienced that he was that person, you know? Yeah, he was, uh, man, I wish he had gotten the deal, dude. He, he was, uh, he was something special and it, it's sad that, that, that the disease took him down. 
Well, you know, that said, and it is, like you said, it is a disease, whether it's addiction or, uh, you know, physical, mental illness. There's there's so many different things that can affect people now, especially with, you know, the opioid epidemic and mental health crisis here in the U.S. that uh, so many people are, are struggling. And I think that uh, one of the simplest answers, and, and it's certainly I believe it's worked for you, is trying to figure out an outlet for creativity to give yourself some form of, uh, getting that energy out and directing it into whether you're drawing something or whether you're going to film something or, or going up on stage and putting yourself out there. The thing is, is you've got to, uh, you know, in order for, for you to be able to be your truest creative self, you know, some people think, you know, I got to, you know, I got to take mushrooms or I got to right. microdose or I got to do this to be creative or I got to drink to be creative. And, you know, for me, there's a direct correlation between, you know, the success I'm having and that I've had in, in, in life, you know, being married, having three dogs, having, you know, living in, a, in, a, in an actual home, like, uh, you know, and, and what it was like before I, I you know, before I, I found a, a program of, of recovery. You know? Right. And, and, and so for me, you know, I, I'm lucky that, you know, there was a pretty direct correlation be, between, you know, being a janitor and uh, living in a one-bedroom studio apartment, living paycheck to paycheck and being depressed all day to now, you know, getting to, getting to work and, and uh, being married and, and being a dog dad and all that stuff, you know. And, and again, I think being, you know, being sober has really uh, allowed me to be the most creative and uh, and kind of, you know, rocketed in the fourth dimension, you know, if if you will. Well, and that's just the thing. So how uh, now that you, you know, are are at a stage where you are continuing to grow as an actor and you're you're starting to achieve these things that you had visualized, uh, you know, getting toward. So, uh, you know, how do you still push yourself? How do you not worry about what happens next in, in the trajectory of, uh, you know, being an actor? Um. I think, you know, uh, it's being uh, grateful, man, grateful and humble and, and, uh, and, and being able to roll with the punches and, and not be delusional about the industry that I'm in. You right. Know, it's, it ebbs and flows, man. It's, you know, peaks and valleys. It's, you know, there's not a lot of that middle ground where you're just like, okay, great. I'm, I'm just making easy money. You know, it's, that's the difference between, you know, this career and other careers is that, you know, you kind of, you got to strike while the iron's hot and the iron will only be hot for a little while, but you know what, it's, the the lows aren't going to last forever and the highs aren't going to last forever. And you've got to try and find that middle ground, regardless of whether you're, you're on one of those highs or in one of those dips. Exactly. And, and, uh, and, and when the work does come, you just got to be uh, so grateful and, 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 and just enjoy every single minute because you don't know how it's how long it's going to last. And at least you can say that you enjoyed the ride. You know what I mean? Exactly, man. You know, you know, with, like I said, with School of Rock, that was so fun and so great. And obviously, it was a bummer when it came to an end. But man, did I feel grateful for the entire experience and the kids that I got to work with, and the producers and writers and everybody from from top to bottom. And so it was just kind of a, a nice you know, uh, learning curve. And that's what I always preach to the kids. I said, you know, I said, guys, we've got to, you know, show up every day. So grateful. Cause honestly, this could be our last job. Yeah. We just don't, we just don't know. Um, yeah, it's and the that's truth. kind of been my, my, my recipe at least. Well, you know, the, the one thing is that, you know, the audience, we see such a small portion. It just looks like, all right, you're on screen, you're having a blast, it's, it's got to be, you know, but there's 95% of the, of the, you know, of what goes on really behind the scenes is just, you know, waiting, writing, waiting some more, you know, filming, and then waiting, and it's such a disparity between, you know, what really goes on in the world of Hollywood versus, you know, us just being able to stream nine episodes in a row and be like, this looks like a blast, this is what I yeah. want to do, you know? <laughs> yeah, dude, and that's, you know, that's why... My wife and I were always writing and creating, and you know, obviously, Flop the podcast was all self-produced by us. It's a web series as well as a podcast, and 
we're writing, working on a movie right now together, and you know, I'm, I've had this sh- dramatic short that I've been working on, kind of based off of a of a of a hero from VMI that that I know of, and so you know, and then all, also, I mean, obviously, you know, performing at the Groundlings is you know is always a big creative outlet for me, and and just the most fun. You know, I got, I literally, I landed home. Um, I think the second of July, uh, and went straight to Groundlings pitch, and then we wow. opened a show, a three month run, two weeks later. So you know, uh, and I thought, you know, what better way to get right back into the groove of things than uh, you know, get right back into it. And you know, that's kind of always been my deal. As I've uh, forward momentum, it seems, you know, yep. forward momentum to allow you to to uh, more accurately choose your next projects and and what you want to create. Yeah, and with like with Slav, so uh, how, how can people find out more about Slav? I know you've got it's on Apple. Yeah, so it's on Apple Podcasts. Slav the podcast. You can find it on YouTube. Slav the podcast, and then you can find it on Instagram at Slav the podcast. And uh, yeah, subscribe, do all that good stuff. Follow us on Insta, and uh, we've got uh, a six episode first season. So we're about to roll out our second episode for the next four weeks. We've got four more episodes rolling out every Wednesday. That's oh yeah, I saw the first episode. It was fantastic, and it's great that you direct, you know, because that's another one of your passions, and you get to to again do something you love with your family, basically. It's been really fun, man. But again, you know, it's about trying to stay busy and and knowing that hey, man, the iron's hot right now, so this is a great time for all those big creative projects to get them out there and and take them around and and see what else. You can get in between uh, in between gemstones, you know. Oh yeah, well it seems like you know Netflix and Amazon uh, and Hulu—they're all so thirsty for for creative content right now because there's just such a need, you know, with all these yeah. new streaming services coming out. And you know, I I think that you've got a hell of an idea on your hands with Slop, so definitely oh, people thanks. should give a listen. And thanks. so you know, the I'm wondering if if you could go back to your very first day at Groundlings. You know, you, let's say you're, you know, you're getting out of your car or you're about to walk in, and you could say something to yourself. If you could go back in time and see that person, is there something that you could think of advice-wise that you would tell, you know, young Tony? That's a little bit of a tough question. I, I, you know, honestly, at that point, I was so kind of low uh, and not de- depressed, but you know, I had not, I hadn't found my voice. I didn't quite know what I was doing. I didn't feel comfortable. I didn't really have any friends. And I think I was just looking exactly for what the Groundlings had to offer, you know, and I think I went into that class to to go, you know, have fun and find joy. But my biggest, you know, again, I I think I went in there with with fun and joy, but I think I would have told, you know, Tony, hey, just go in there and have fun. Find the joy, you know, because uh, I I think that's, you know, whether – it's it's getting cast on something or directing something. If if you can have fun and find the joy, and then that you know that becomes contagious, For you sure. know, and then people are like, oh, that guy's great to come around, and and you mix that with a little bit of that discipline from all the sports and the military school and the Boy Scouts and everything else. You know, he shows up on time, he knows his lines, he works hard. That guy's great to have around. You know, plus you know he's funny. You know, and, <laughs> right. And, you know, if if uh, you know all, all of those things combined, you know, I I, I would uh, I, I would tell myself that. But again, I think you know, I think I was going in there looking for that exact thing, and that's what I found there. And so, you know, um, I don't know, <laughs> spend your money wisely. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. But again, exactly. I think that's you know, that's a given for anyone out here in LA where it's so darn expensive. Oh yeah, it's something. But you know. <sighs> As as the flip side of that, how about something that you feel like you need to tell yourself today? Uh, you know, for me, I think it's, you know, pause. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, pause. Because I'm doing a lot of traveling right now, a lot of a lot of, you know, work around the house and my wife and I we're both really busy and it's, you know, to take a break and uh and check in on others, you know, because when you feel yourself too wrapped up in your own stuff, it's it's really good to, you know, step outside yourself, call a family member you haven't talked to in a long time, call that friend that might have been struggling through something, and 
and check in on someone else, and uh, that's kind of the fastest way to get get out of your own own head is to be a service to others. So, you know, Tony, pause, get out of your head. You know, there you go. Well, that's a boy. That's a Boy Scout thing all the way. You know, it's there just you go. pause, pause, and reflect a little bit. You yeah. know, so. If there if there are any listeners that are struggling through something right now, whether that uh, could you know be a bad breakup, it could be a, a relapse in their recovery, or uh, you know withdrawal, uh, mental illness. If someone is suffering right now, is what do you think the the most important thing uh, would be to say? Something that you know they would need to hear in this moment as they're actually you know, struggling through. You know, number one is you. You've got to put your oxygen mask on first before you can help anyone else. Yeah. So you got to get yourself into the right place. And luckily, you know, for those living in big cities, there is help all over the place, whether it's, you know, a 12-step program or uh, some kind of a group program where you can get together and you can start working on yourself, you know, whether it's it's scheduling that therapy appointment you've been, you haven't been doing, you know, that you need to go in and do or, you know, just get yourself out there. Don't be afraid. Take that first step um, because as soon as you can help yourself, then you can pick up the phone and help someone else, and you'll find out that once you do that, you're going to be helping yourself even more, you know, because, sure. again, I think being a service um, to others is, is, is the best medicine, and I think once you can get your your stuff straight, um, you'll be able to do that, and, uh, and things will start to get better. You know, yeah, and, uh, and that's empathy. the big thing is that it does get better. It it really genuinely can get better, and it's just a, a thing where little tiny changes, well, you know, one little difference can make uh, a momentous change the next day. You know, and it just is building blocks for progress. So exactly. it's exactly, and it's something that we all deal with in in some format or another. Where you know, there's always going to be adversity. There's always going to be times of uh, struggle or or trials uh, or loss. And the the reality is is that uh, we're never alone. You know, there's there's always uh, people for support, and there's there's always a way to um, to remember that tomorrow is another day, and to really be able to put a different foot forward the next day. If you know, if you're ready to do that. Exactly, and you know, again, you know, the world's not against you, and right. the more you can empathize and try and you know really get someone else's point of view and listen, you know, because I know when you're depressed or going through a breakup, it, it seems like the whole world can be against you. And mm-hmm. and the fact is, is that, you know, it's just not, you know, and, uh, and you don't matter that much. <laughs> right, right. You know, you don't matter that much to others. So you got to take care of yourself and you can genuinely ask other people how they're doing and listen, you know, and empathize with where they might be coming from because, you know, we hear it a million times, but you know, it, it's it's the truth when when people say, you know, you have no idea what someone else is going through, and that's right. you know, more times than not just the truth. Absolutely, yeah, you really don't, and and if you really try to keep that at the forefront of your mind, it it may make things more understandable, you know, to yourself and and just in the behavior of others, because who knows what's going on? You know, we we all really do. Uh, we process stress differently. We handle it differently, and this is just—it's a—it uh, can be a crazy life sometimes. Yep. So the one thing that uh, that I like to do with the show is, if there is anybody that's uh, listening that needs something to do, that if you're just running around the hamster wheel in your thoughts and and you need to have a little distraction, is uh, send us a drawing. You can go on our site at sensoryshow.com. There's a little Easter egg button there that you can find that'll show you how to submit. If you want to draw your thoughts down, you want to have some kind of cathartic process of draw an alien, draw a monster, draw whatever it is that you're feeling inside at this moment, then you know express it, get it out somehow, uh, and, and send it over to us. And if you want to uh, send it via Instagram, that's at Radio Withdrawal, and uh, just put hashtag extra sensory. So if, if that's something you want to uh, to take part in, Tony, you're, you're definitely invited to if you want to, you know, doodle something that that would be totally cool for the show and we can put that up with uh, the other viewers. But uh, the one thing I, I guess I want to say last is that I, I think you're killing it 100%. I think you should be so proud of yourself and, and pat yourself on the back for finding your passion, uh, making that passion your strength and really realizing your dream. 
Oh, thank you so much, man. It was really great to be here. And, and you know, again, not perfect. Nobody is. And, you know, you can brace that imperfection and, and uh, keep striving for that for that progress uh, towards whatever perfection is in your mind, you know. Yeah, and, and, you know, every little step is progress. There you go, man. So, Tony, thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Lots of love. And I can't Thanks wait to see whatever uh, whatever comes next, man. It's going to be great. All right, buddy. Thanks so much for having me. All right, boss. Have a good one. You too. We'll be back with more sensory deprivation after the break. was invented. It was cold and cherry and very magical because when you poured water on it, it fizzed and grew into a soft drink so thick and cold you had to eat it with a spoon. And like nothing the world has ever known before, when you ate it, wild and wonderful things ran up and down, in and out, and all over inside you. And that's why today, in honor of that very extraordinary experience, we call this soft drink, you eat with a spoon, chills and thrills. I want to thank everyone for listening and remind you to go to sensoryshow.com for information on new episodes and to send in any drawings or creations that represent you or through our Instagram, at Radio Withdrawal, hashtag Extrasensory, where you can see submissions from my guests as well as others. And if you are struggling, or if you would like to get information on obtaining free mental health or addiction services in your state, please feel free to DM me anytime, and remember you are never alone in this. Help is only a message away, and we are all in this together. I also want to take a moment to thank my sponsors, Sure Microphones, Rewind Audio for the best vintage hi-fi sales and rentals, Mario Badescu Skincare, Liquid Death Spring Water, Schaefer's Garment Hotel for the best denim on the planet, Sterling Assault, Vibes, Oxford Pennant, Rock and Monkey Stickers, Lost in Time Designs for my amazing artwork, and Bit Apart for the incredible music. Please visit sensoryshow.com to find links and ways to support my sponsors. Thank you for making this show possible.